Ladies and gentlemen, the sun has now found its home in the western sky, and it is Saturday night in Tiger Stadium, home of the LSU Tigers, one of the great venues in college football. Today we have a top 25 matchup on hand with two of college football's premier teams preparing to slug it out. As we'll see, the number 25 team in the country, the USC Trojans, taking on the 13th ranked team in the land, the LSU Tigers. 48 Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, can't wait to get this one started. And the Trojans will get us underway with the opening kickoff. He'll start the return inside his five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. The LSU Tigers offense takes the field to start this game off. And there he is, the man, David, that they build this entire attack around. And it's so nice to have a guy that makes everything easy for the people around him. The quarterback plays better because the feature is clear who that is. And we all hold our breath every time this guy touches the football. He's able to take it the distance on any given play. And those physical runs take a toll. It might not be a big game now, but down the road, third, fourth quarter, late in the ball games, they tend to turn into bigger runs. After picking up a couple at second and eight, from the gun, the running back looking for room. Defense there to stop him after a gain of one to the 22. Didn't take long to need a clutch play on the opening drive. It's third and seven. Dropping back, it's Nussmeyer. Working that left side now. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. We asked earlier this week, who's your favorite receiver? And of course, he said the open one. But we know who he really wants to go to on third down. The best one. <laughs> I mean, I think the open one, obviously, the politically correct answer. But you want to find the guy that you got that great chemistry with. You know exactly where he's going to be. You got that bond and that trust. Quickly complete. The quick passing game does several things. One, it doesn't let the pass rush get you. Those great defensive live, and the ball's coming out so fast they can't get there. And then what else? It gets me ahead of the sticks. I don't have to worry about getting in long yardage and predictable situations. This offense has a second down play. The give is to Williams. And he's to the 48-yard line. That'll be good enough for a first down. The Bayou Bengals have been able to put on an aerial circus in recent years, but the foundation, the running game. Don't forget about the run game. That, that, that starts everything, right? Because if you can run it, you can throw it, you can create some bounds and keep defenses off guard. But I think LSU does a really good job of always establishing the run game first. Then they'll get to their playmakers and all the speed out there. And the defense snows him under after a very short game. That's a really good job by the defense, wrapping them up, getting them on the ground, take away that run game, make them one-dimensional, put them in passing situations. Really good job by the defense. Picked up two yards on that last one. They need eight on second down. From the gun, the running back has it. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but now facing third down. Back to throw, it's Nussmeyer. Right down the middle. Can't make the connection on third down thanks to that tough, hard-nosed pass defense, and now it's fourth down. That's one thing this defense takes a lot of pride on. They like tackling the catch, and they like being around the ball. That time, he was in proximity to knock that thing loose. Nice physical play. Looks as if LSU will line up to punt it away. Looks as if they might have a little something going there, but they'll have to kick it away. The Trojans' offense will try to get something started with their first possession. 
as we take a look at our impact players for this game. David, what do you look for to make an impact from your leaders? Your leaders not only have to lead the football team, but they got to step up and make plays on the field, keep everybody calm. These guys typically do a really good job of it. Yeah, David, and they also generally set the tone for their respective football teams. Regardless of which side of the ball they play on, the teammates look towards them to step up in big games like this. This crowd trying to make life miserable for this offense. He'll run it again. Finally pulled down, but not before. Moving the change for a first down. And the legendary John McKay would be proud of the execution of the running game and picking up the first down. Yeah, the basic principles of the run game, right? The easy stuff, the boring stuff. Not fancy, not, uh, not loved. Everybody likes points and all that other you know, stuff that goes with it. But you got to get the good running game. USC doing a good job of it. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Listen, I know there are a lot of DBs out there that all they want to do is get interceptions and dance in the end zone. This dude likes to put his face in the fan, get close to the line of scrimmage, and tackle. And on the opening drive, if he's out there, he gets a huge tackle for loss early. That is a statement play. They go to the draw. Stuffed almost in his track, but strong enough to pick up one to the 35. And these defensive tackles just eat people. They swallow human beings when you get near them. They're so big, so strong. And when those guys, those running backs come in, they just need a mitt. They put one mitt on a running back, and he usually falls to the ground just because of their sheer mass and strength. Third and long, and he'll try to throw for it. Quick strike complete. And he's not going to get there. The defense stands tall and makes the stop. You gotta love that on defense. One of the most critical statistics out there is how do you play on third down? How do you prevent the opponent from keeping drives alive? Right there, tackling the catch, you gave up the completion. What do you do? You set up fourth and long, you're gonna get the ball back. Go get some water and celebrate. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. Signals for the fair catch and makes it at the 20. The Bayou Bengals will run the offense out onto the field. He's gonna pass. He gets there, and they get him down at the 14-yard line. That's a good example there of complementary defense. The DBs and linebackers are playing zone. They're playing their spaces, and they force the QB to, to have to hold the ball, try to work through his progressions, and then the pass rush. They win up front. We'll see if they can dial up one that works this time on second down from the 14. Hand off from the shotgun. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. That linebacker was a heat-seeking missile, and the heat that he sought was the ball carrier. Yeah, great job, great feel. Linebackers are making all the calls in the defense and understanding when I need to come through that gap and come through with bad intentions. Those guys are usually 245 pounds of heat-seeking missile. On third and long, he'll need to loosen up that arm. Defense was not fooled by that screen to the back, and they'll stop him short of the marker. It'll be fourth down. He just didn't have a chance to get loose and make his way to that first down marker. I think fans get upset sometimes. Like, run your route past the sticks so we get the first down. But nice job by the defense understanding where the sticks were and forcing the fourth down. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. He only needs a sliver of daylight. And the punt team gets down there and gets the return man on the ground. It's been a defensive battle through the first period, and the stats tell that tale. Both sides trying to find a little rhythm and efficiency and move the ball some here as we start the second quarter. He'll keep it himself. Really nice stop there from this senior leader. Yeah, and it's a nice job by this defense. Understand, listen, that QB is a threat. And they're going to run all kinds of options, and he's going to run the football. They were dialed in and got that sucker to the ground. They ran it on first down, now on second. 
Looks as if the defense was a little too eager there, got into the neutral zone, and that'll be a five-yard penalty. Encroachment. Encroachment. Defense. Defense. Defense couldn't quite hold its water, and it'll be five free yards for the O. Looking for space, it's O'Neal. A confident, tough, efficient run gets it up to the 44. Let it bust for a long one, but now third down becomes very manageable. It's not third in eternity. Now the whole playbook, short passing game, long passing game, all of it's available. Third and short from the 44, and we might know if they plan to go for it on fourth down by what they call here. They'll try to move the chains on the ground. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. You know, the runner just has to have a little bit more patience. Bounce that thing outside a little too early, and as a result, lost yards. The Trojans will call on their punt team. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. Fair catch called for and made. LSU will dive into the playbook here on offense. Boy, three and out last time, David. They'd like to be more productive this time around. Yeah, in the last drive, nothing really clicked. No rhythm. Got off the field really, really quickly. They need to put something together here. Yeah, David, bad execution on that last drive. So they got to take a collective breath and start playing like a unit on this one. Second down after that incompletion. The RPO, it's complete. And a good job of coverage by that defense, just a short pickup. That was a good read there. Not the biggest gain in the world, David, but take up the space they're going to give you in the zone. Yeah, make it easy, man. Make the right decision. If he's open, get it to him. Get some positive yards. Basically a run play. Looking downfield, it's Gus Meyer. Finds a soft spot in the middle. He'll make a play on third down. He's got enough for the first as they mark it at the 32. QBs, when you see zone covers, man, can you manipulate defense when you have a good pocket? You've got time to throw. He had a little bit of time to throw. You can move guys with your eyes. That drag comes wide open. Good throw, good catch, first down. They'll go to the ground. Running with power. Finding a way to put that foot in the ground and get it up to the 37-yard line. Listen, defense is about energy. It's about passion. It's about physicality. They need a little bit more of that. Get the guy in the ground. You can't let guys break tackles. What could have been set up in a long yard situation, now it becomes an easier situation because you couldn't get him on the ground. Grabbed over the middle. It's Daniels. And it's a first down. They'll mark it at the 44. Well, it's a nice job by the defender. They're closing the gap with the wide receiver. They're going to complete the hitch pass, but he's able to run right up on it and get him to the ground for a minimal gain. LSU moving quickly, going to work again on first down. Give to the back. And a pickup of eight opens a whirl of opportunities on second and two. I know it's sexy to throw the football, but if you can pound it away and get these kind of gains, they will just add up, wear the defense down, get first downs, and ultimately get some points. Got eight on first down, now looking at a second and two. Direct snap. Can't get him to the ground. And he won't quite get there, but boy, after that pickup, just a few inches to go for the first, an array of possibilities here. Offense about to reel off its seventh play of the drive. Catch in the middle, it's Taylor. They'll move the chains. Good execution on third down. They've got it at the 41. It's really easy to say the word RPO and say I'm going to run them, but you got to make those decisions and you got to make them fast. You can't get confused by all the craziness that's going on, by all the guys moving around or talking. Nice job by the quarterback. Staying in the moment, seeing it, throwing the slant, making sure he makes the right decision. You'll take four yards on first down every time, second and six. 
Nice run there on first down. You know, this is a running back that gets better as the game goes on. So they're going to want to make sure they keep feeding him the football, let him get lathered up. Solid pickup of four on first down. It's second and six. Wants to throw. It's Nussmeyer. Just gets rid of it to the running back underneath. And just a short, safe pass play. They pick up a few. I want to get my running backs the ball in space as much as possible. And sometimes it doesn't work in the running game. But I can throw it to him. I can try to create some space out wide, dump him the football, let him make some catches, and see if I can't get some big plays out of him. Here on third down for this offense. They'll try to pick up the first through the air. Got his man down the middle. Just outside the red zone as they pick up the first down, they'll spot it at the 22. Well, we know this guy is special. And because of that, his quarterback is looking to him on critical down and distances. There on that third down, there was no question. It wouldn't have mattered if he was single covered, double covered, man zone. That's where he was going with it. And the big time playmaker outside picks up the first. And these quarterbacks have to really trust their wide receivers that they're going to be disciplined and run to the right route when they're throwing that ball to the outside like that because those corners are sitting there on the inside. And the worst thing that could happen is to miss inside and that cornerback be going the other direction. The aerial assault continues. Coming after him. They get to him as he throws. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Aaron. I just love the execution by this offense. Late in the half, man, you want to take the lead. You want to get that momentum on your side, and they do it. They finish it with the passing game. I'll tell you what, keep that passing game up. You can keep this lead, keep the momentum, and keep putting up numbers. Getting set for the point after. Is on for the extra point. And the extra point makes it 7 0. Precise, relentless execution on that 13 play scoring drive. And they finish it up with a 15 yard scoring toss. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. On the move from inside is five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. And guys, USC has the ball back and sending the offense onto the field. Pocket starts to collapse. There's a timeout call as this offense tries to find a way to draw a little closer. That's not how you want to start a drive. On the very first play, you give up a sack and you lose a ton of yards. Quarterback, you've got to know, just throw the ball away, knowing the play is over. Trying play action. Almost had the completion. Just missed it. Well, the receiver did everything right. He ran a good route. He got his head around. He just didn't finish the play. Just look it in. The roar of the crowd trying to fuel this defense to keep them pinned in their own end. Looking for a physical attack from the gun. And sure, tackling there to keep him from getting to the first down marker. Referee signals timeout as the defense wanting to make sure that they have everything just right with a big play coming. He gets it away from his own end zone. He gets a block. And the returner runs out of real estate as he goes down. Here comes the offense on first down. They're going to throw it to start the drive. Snagged in the middle, it's Williams. This defense is going to have to be careful. Not only do they have to worry about this guy running the football, but they've got to keep their eye on him when he runs routes, too. He is a versatile back. That last completion sets him up on second down. Looking to throw, it's Nussmeyer. Quickly complete. And he's knocked down immediately, but not before he moves the chains. 
throw him to the spot. And that's exactly what he did to pick up the first down. And that's so many hours of doing this together. You know exactly when he's going to break on that out route. You know what kind of speed he has because you've thrown it so many times. Nice rhythm and timing. And you could tell that was experience between receiver and quarterback. What a nice connection. Knocked down immediately, and they've got it at the 25. It's really tough on offenses, but defenses know what you got to do. you got to pass the football. They're in man coverage. How about the receiver understanding where the first down is? He smells it. He goes and gets it. This will likely be the last play of the half. Got him downfield. There to make the tackle, but the big throw is good enough to give them a first down. The offense calls timeout, and they won't have any more left this half. And as the first half draws near to a close, here comes the field goal unit. He got it. They'll trot off to the locker room after the field goal to close the half. We played two quarters here. Time to go to Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Thanks, guys. Looks like we've got a terrific game from there in Death Valley. And it's been said football is a game of inches. And guess what? Based on the comparison between third down conversion rate today and the average yard per play, how can you argue that? I mean, the low-lying fruit is to look at some of the explosive plays we've seen and panic. But really, this game is going to come down to which team is more efficient when they have the ball and how they play when it matters most. And with that, let's head back to Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. LSU will put foot to leather to start the second half. And he takes this from inside the five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. This Trojan offense is ready to go back to work. Maybe adjustments or attitude or attitude adjustments. But they've got to find a way to run the ball at least some here in the second half. I do think you said something that's important. I think running the football is an attitude. Like, it starts with the offensive lineman and being physical, having a nasty attitude, running back, same thing. I think they need more of that in the second half. You know, and I think if any of you're in this defense, you have an opportunity to make a statement here. Yeah, I know you guys went in at halftime and you riled yourselves up and you told yourself that you think you can run the ball on us. On this very first drive, we're going to prove to you, just like in the first 30 minutes, you cannot. From the gun, the ground game. Found a little bit of running room, knocked down at the 24 after a pickup of four. I think one of the hardest things to do is stick to the run when it's not working. But it's those runs right there that are the reason why you have to do it, right? You can't get too one-dimensional. Keep slipping those runs in there. Keep getting a little bit of positive yards. Next thing you know, you'll look up and you might break one of those after you got them a little bit tired. Trying to make that rush think on the draw play here. And he's not going to make it. The defense denying him the first down. The big defensive tackles in the middle, they're not always the best pass rushers, but they are strong. And I say country strong. They put their hands on you, you feel it. They lock the people out of the line of scrimmage. They create separation. They wrap running backs up. And usually, they don't get out of the midst of those big boys. And he'll work his way on the return out to the 35-yard line before he stops. The Bayou Bengals will run the offense out onto the field. Looking for a man, it's Nussmeyer. And when your defense is performing like this, makes the grab inside the 30. Touchdown, Tigers! What a grab and go for the score. Well, as a defense, you know you're going to see the go route, especially against this guy. He does it to defenses, it seems, every single week. And so they're not able to get back deep enough to get run by. He makes the catch and then runs it into the end zone. They're going to have to change up their coverage and get some safety help up over the top because this guy's speed is a problem. They'll try to add another to their lead. 
And the extra point will tack another one onto this lead. That's the kind of drive everybody loves. So see quarterback, one snap, put it in the end zone. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. From inside the 10, here he comes. He was looking for more running room, but none to be found as he stopped at the 23. And guys, USC has the ball back and sending the offense onto the field. Trailing now by 17, David, this is an opportunity that they need to answer. Hit the afterburners, kid. And they're getting it rolling with that play to the 42-yard line. One of the things I love about these misdirection-type plays is that you can pull offensive linemen and get extra bodies at the point of attack. So you're setting yourself up with good angles if you execute it properly, David, and you saw it right there. And saying the word angles means a lot because that's exactly what you do. Now I can block down and I can leave somebody unblocked, pull around, kick him out, use misdirection in the backfield. Really just get your eyes as a defense on something else and then go the other direction. Nice misdirection play call by this offense. And it's incomplete. If you're going to take a hit like that, you might as well hang on to the ball. After they couldn't connect, it's second and ten. They're trying to slow that rush down with the draw. And this offense just has to find a way to convert this third down or else they are really in trouble. He'll take the deep shot. And this is dropped. Incomplete pass. He had a huge gain in his fingers and he couldn't hold on. Really nice third down sub defense there at that time. It's third and long. They're expecting pass. And they're mixing up their looks. They're trying to change the picture pre-snap to post-snap to confuse the quarterback. Now forcing the incompletion setting up for Another punt on the way. Got to make sure those hammies and glutes all activated. Don't want any muscle pulls from overuse. LSU will dive into the playbook here on offense. Boy, that last touchdown, the one play, quick strike score. Jesse, this offense hoping to keep that kind of explosiveness going. I don't know if they're going to get the same looks defensively because of just how explosive that play was, Reese David. They may be seeing a little bit more uh, off coverage on this drive and maybe some soccer boxes to run into. And when you make that kind of explosive play, you're going to put the defense on its heels. They're going to be a little bit more conservative. So this offense approach now, maybe I don't have to go deep. I can go a little bit shorter and just make those easy plays in there. Caught on the outside, it's Ingram. He steps out of bounds, but it will be enough for a first down. I'll tell you, QBs and receivers, they practice these out routes all week long. You've got to anticipate. You've got to be comfortable throwing it before he gets out of his break. And they executed it perfectly right there to pick up that first. Off play action on first down. Grabbed in the middle, it's Daniels. Stopped at the 43 after the 15-yard pickup. It's a really nice play there. The thing about this guy, he forces the defense to have to stay disciplined. He just can't take a play on. He reminds me of an old LSU quarterback that I used to play against, Herb Tyler. He was a guy that could hurt you throwing the ball, but he was also shifty and he could extend plays. We had a great defense of Florida, full of NFL dudes, but he just never let you feel comfortable because of his athleticism and his dynamic ability. This guy has a little bit of that, too. And it's just simple. Simple first down run, showing your physicality, setting your offense up in a good spot. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. Got it behind the line. It's Taylor. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. Death Valley has a well-earned rep of being intimidating. It is nice to be the quarterback to have everything on your side. And have everything quiet. It's the loudest place by far that I ever played. I mean, for an entire game, they are on their feet, yelling, screaming. Now, listen, we can't play all the words they're yelling, Reese. And it's intercepted. A turnover for the defense. Looking for more room. Running inside the 20. And he has taken it all the way back. Touchdown, Trojans. 
What a play by this defense with the pick six. And how about the defender? Exactly what you're supposed to do. Breaks on the football, makes the interception. Everybody on defense, we turn to offense. Go lay some blocks so my guy can get it and take it back to the house. He'll try to tack on one more. And it's up and good as they draw just a touch closer. That makes the score LSU 17, USC 7. They're lining up to kick it off after the pick six, and that defense will come out feeling it. Here he comes from inside his own five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. The Bayou Bengals will run the offense out onto the field. RPO complete to open the drive. Knocked down at the 26 after ripping off 10 there. Good job reading the defense by the quarterback on that RPO. He waited to see how the defense was going to play the run. He saw defenders bite up close to the line of scrimmage, and right away he knew he had the slant throw right in behind. Grab behind the line. It's Daniels. They stop him almost immediately. Short game there, and still a little ground to cover to pick up the first. This quarterback right now is in a groove, and he's doing a nice job in pre-snap. He's reading the coverage, and he's getting an idea of where he wants to go with the football. That's why the ball's coming out of his hands so quickly, and that's why he seems like he's in a great rhythm right now. Now on the option. The pitch. And he's running in the open. And a big play there on the option. The pitch was executed perfectly. Yeah, defensively, you better be ready to run east and west when you're playing against this offense in their running game. That time, the offense was able to outflank the defense to the right side for a big play. The Tigers are in the hurry up. Looking to go up top on first down. Fires into traffic. It's picked off. Trying to take it back. The 40. The 20. And with the interception, he'll take it all the way back. Touchdown, USC. Good defenses stop you from scoring. Great ones score themselves, and LSU has done that so well over the years. Yeah, and it's about guys who are playmakers. It's about guys who can lock up on the outside, and LSU recruits them, they develop them, and so many guys you see at the highest level doing it, and this is why, because they come to LSU and become stars. Ready to try the point after. And with the extra point, they close it to a 17-14 game. That makes the score LSU 17, USC 14. They'll kick it off and send that defense right back out there to try to score again after the pick six. Let's see if he can make a play on the return. Nice job executing all of the assignments as they put a stop to that return at the 22. LSU will dive into the playbook here on offense. That last pick six after a drive like that, David, can swing the momentum of a game. The defense is still celebrating. I mean, such a big play. I mean, they, they gave up some yards, but did what they're supposed to do. Now, Jesse, this offense has to put a drive together. Yeah, they have to recapture some momentum here. What they can't do is go three and out and get the ball right back. Offense gets set for second down. The give is to Williams. And he surges up to the 36-yard line, and they'll move the chain. This offense has to get this guy the ball in as many ways as possible. He showed you all of his tools on that last play. If you like old school running games, this has been the game for you and a couple of guys who starred through the first three periods.
One more period to go to see who can make the winning plays and come home with the victory. They'll snap it from the 36. They've got a first down. Right back to the well. Not a whole lot of room there. Three yards, maybe. Second and seven. You know, it's so important for offenses to want to keep third downs manageable. The way you do that is by having success like that, running the football on first down. Got three on first down at second and seven. Looking to pass. It's Nussmeyer. Throws to the wideout. Complete to the left. And the defense makes the immediate tackle, but he has enough for the first down. Yeah, and you've seen these curl routes. This is a timing route. Understand the ball's got to come out of my hand right when he hits the top of that curl. Nice job by the QB finding him. Nice catch. LSU moving the ball quickly down the field. Caught in the backfield. It's Lacey. I love offenses and quarterbacks that are willing to take the easy stuff. Take those easy throws that are guaranteed to get positive yards. Yeah, I'm going to take big shots down the field, too. But don't forget, it's easier to pick up second and five, third and five, than it is when we start getting those long yarded situations. Caught in the backfield, it's Lacey. He is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose yards on that one. Well, give the defense credit on that one because they knew coming into this one that they were going to try to get this receiver the ball in a variety of ways. They were ready for the screen there, and they create a negative play. Here they come on third down, and the defense has had no answer so far. From the gun, wants to pass. Fires to the wideout. Just masterful working that sideline and getting the toe down for the catch. I tell you, this quarterback has just been in a great rhythm all game long. With that last completion, he's now over 300 yards passing. And the Tigers in the hurry up. Out of the shotgun, they go to the ground. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And a great job by the linebacker. You could tell, starting to crowd the line of scrimmage, get up there in the line of scrimmage, see it, diagnose it, get in the backfield, get the running back on the ground for the tackle for the loss. Last play didn't go well. It leaves him with second and 11. Using the quick game. And the defense had that one well covered, just a short game there. I'll say this, man. In college football, you see a lot of bad tackling. You didn't see it right there. That was an awesome job. First off, being there at the point of attack, once the tight end made the catch, there was no doubt he was going down. Great job form tackle. They line up, and it is a long way to the sticks from here. A quick completion to the left, looking for the first down. And he's not going to get there. The defense stands tall and makes the stop. This is one of those unique situations in a game as a head coach. You're trying to feel the momentum. And what's your confidence in your quarterback? Because you've got fourth, you're in field goal range, but you've got the weapons to get one more completion and ice this thing. So do you kick the field goal or do you go for it? He splits the uprights and puts three on the board. Hold on just a second. Personal foul. Personal foul. Right on the field. Uh, the the up with that. <laughs> you must protect the kicker when he's in a defenseless position like that. That penalty's going to give the offense a first down. From the gun, he leaves it with the bat. He steps and powers and works his way. They finally get him down at the two. Second and goal. To throw, it's Nussmeyer. Fires to the end zone. And it's intercepted. A huge fourth quarter play for this defense. Man, we needed that so bad. We needed the football. Had to get a stop. Forcing a turnover. Best case scenario. Offense back on the field. Trailing in the fourth quarter. Time to go win it.
This Trojan offense is ready to go back to work. Their drive chart is starting to look a little monotonous. Punt, 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 David. And their defense is starting to get a little frustrated, too. They just keep putting me back on the field, possession after possession. Jesse, this offense needs to get their heads out of there, you know what. The punter's on the sideline with the oxygen mask right now. He's been playing so much. He's not used to this. This offense, they just got to stay on the field. They got to put a drive together and get some balance going, running and throwing the ball. On the run, it's O'Neal. And they try to run inside, and there is nowhere to go. Yeah, and this offense has to find a way to run the football. They, they got to get more creative, but whatever that looks like for this offense, something to jumpstart them, because nothing really going on the ground. Yeah, defensively, though, you got to give them credit, too, because they knew that physically they were going to try to be challenged up front. That was a big MO for this offense coming into it, but the defense, they've risen to the occasion. Their front seven has dominated this entire game. Now such a tough situation late in this game. You're trailing, but now it's fourth and long. Like, it's one thing if it's fourth and short. This makes it even more difficult. you got to have something dialed up you feel really great about. And the Trojans send out the punt unit. And these guys have been busy. Sixth punt of the day. He'll settle for some pretty good field position and make the fair catch at around the 35. The Bayou Bengals will run the offense out onto the field away from the defender and he broke one tackle on the way to a solid pickup there our coach said to never go broke taking a profit take what's there take the positive yards and never complain defense trying to keep this offense from getting a line on who to block second down here and maybe they've got time to get one more snap off before the two minute warning they'll keep it on the ground to keep this clock moving He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. We have arrived at the two-minute warning, a one-possession game as this offense tries to hold on. Come to the line at the 42, facing a third and short. The back goes in motion. Dropping back, it's Nussmeyer. Unloads to the wideout. Finds a man on the left. Defense uses a timeout quickly, trying to get that ball back and preserve time for their offense. He has been the go-to guy on offense all game one. On a critical third down here in the fourth quarter, surprise, surprise, guess who they go to? That guy. And he was fortunate not to lose yardage on that play, able to wedge it back to the line of scrimmage. Timeout called there by the defense, desperate to get the ball back and save as much time as possible. They got nothing on the last play at second and ten. The give from the gun. Breaks the tackle. That one did not go well. Tackled in the backfield for a loss of six. Quick timeout called by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. I'm not positive, but that first down marker might be in the next county. Wide out in motion. Touch pass on the jet sweep. He ended up losing yardage on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. And as an offense, you've got an unconventional call. You're trying to get your receiver the ball using pre-snap motion, but you've got to do a better job up front blocking. Couldn't get it done, and now it sets up fourth down. LSU will bring the punt team on the field. And the punt hits at the eight and goes into the end zone for the touchback. And guys, USC has the ball back and sending the offense onto the field. Makes the catch. It's O'Neal. And that defense pushing him out of bounds after a short game. And how about the defense? How big was that stop? Forcing the punt, getting it back to the offense. And all of a sudden, you feel the momentum now on their side. They've got to move quickly here. Still a chance, but they've got to force the ball down the field. To the air, it's Moss. Throws to the wideout. A strike downfield. And it is a chunk play. A huge gain on that one before the defense brings it to an end. And there was no question in that scenario. That's where the quarterback was going. He knew he had his receiver in a matchup that he liked, running a route where he would find himself open. Nice job between those two. 
And they'll get to the line and spike it to stop the clock. It leads to second down. Second down coming up. He's looking to throw. Fires to the wideout. Makes a connection. Good, solid pick up there. Now they can start to smell it with a first down at the 31. Man, this quarterback is going to have to be deadly accurate here in this two-minute situation, right? And that's really what he's had to be all game long. He hasn't had a lot of yards because the coverage has just been so tight. He's had to be pinpoint perfect. It's been hard just to find completions, no doubt. That's going to be the same thing here in this two-minute drill. And they are coming out for what will be a huge field goal attempt. Timeout called by the defense and 15 seconds to go in this one. And this to tie things up in the final minute. And they decide to trot out the kicker. What a disappointment. No good. And after the miss, they're still down by a field goal. Well, that was a big play. They say games come down to just a handful of plays. And with a chance to tie the game here in the fourth quarter, they missed the opportunity, clanking that one off the post. Running out the clock seems to be a mere formality here as they are ready to snap it in victory formation. And it looks as if the offense will just take a knee. 